sport. Going to be doing some sport mode races. Hopefully get enough money to buy. Oh, we're looking at maybe for the next thing I paint. Uh, the Corvette. The GT3 Corvette. But I kind of don't know if I want to spend all the money. Soft is with my cars. But we are going to race and we're not using the motion controls today because A, you can see that they're really about, there's not much of a difference in speed. Uh, I'm kind of tired. And I, I just don't feel like it. So. <laughs> We'll be doing uh, traditional driving with the HUD and everything. I'm sorry, but sooner or later we'll get that hardcore mode out again. Because last night was some pretty good fun. So we'll uh, for today though we will be running the regular settings and controls. towards the tail of the field again. We can't seem to find any speed at this track. I don't know what it is, but we're really, really bad here. So. Let's play with our brake bias, maybe. Actually listening to ASMR while I do these races, so maybe I'll be a little more calm. Even though I'm already too calm as it is, but you know, you can never be too calm. Actually, yes, you can. Let me take that back. Probably should have just practiced this instead of racing it right off the bat, but uh, we all make mistakes. <clears throat> we'll be caboosing it as we have been for the entirety of the full game. But we're still getting some precious seat time and learning, so I guess there's some some value to it. Though. I can hear the cicadas. Cicadas going off.
the chicane seems to be our passing zone here. here I think if we don't choke it here in the last lap we might have a shot to grab a top five oh yeah they're gonna get physical up here Had to try three times to get that downshift to happen. To happen. Couldn't, I couldn't get the trigger to go far enough to actually register as engaged. Oh Jesus! Ooh, come on! We just we never get runs out of the final corner. I don't know what our deal is, but it doesn't matter what car we're driving or what track we're at. Everybody gets a better run out of the final corner than us every damn time, and I don't know why that happens. That's about the most frustrating thing. We will never win our race coming off the final corner because we never have ever, at any track with any car with any setting had long run speed out of the final corner. We'll get it out of every other corner, but it's always the last corner. We just have zero speed. And it's so weird. I don't even understand that. Because <laughs> we took that straight, more straight than those guys did. Nice clean race though. Level up. Yeah, we lost our S rank, by the way, when we got DQ'd for no reason. So that's fun. We gotta get that back. Watch football, Maris girl.
watch that either. <laughs> Pretty much motorsports and hockey are the extent of what I watch. Even then, hockey's kind of a catch it when I can sort of thing.
Okay, we are in the upper half, qualifying-wise. P4. Alright.
race starts, I probably won't talk a whole lot on this side. Straight away, because stuff like that could happen at any moment. You never know. You're gonna have to take a base of action. What the hell? Well, we're out of the race. That's just my luck. Somebody didn't know what the left pedal did, I guess. Oh, and then we're gonna get shoved off track. Isn't that lovely? Jesus. about all I can handle with that. That's just really unfortunate. I don't even know what to say, man. That's the first good race we've had in literally four days or so. And it's over as soon as we get drilled from behind by someone who didn't even try to slow down for the corner. Just unbelievable. back to A, and now we're racing with people like that who just 
use you as a break. Um, that's really not fair to me. It's not fair to other people who are S rank and have one bad race and then they're back with the nobodies and the bumper cars. It just it, it kind of baffles me why they would do that. Because it's the cap isn't even a strong cap. You can lose it in one race. It's not enough of a cap. It needs to be extended so that you have to have two, three, even four bad races in a row to really have to, to jeopardize falling out of the S class. Because, you know, that's just my feelings on it. I, I know my feelings don't matter to Polyphony in the sense that I'm just one person, but I mean, there's several people that are having the same frustration. I think it's something they really need to look at because it's way too easy to be punished for one bad mistake and have to pay those repercussions three, four races down the road. That's that's not how it should work. So here's the guy that punted us. From P2.
tells you how much speed we had in that race. We got punted from P2, dropped all the way to like P8, and worked our way all the way up to be knocking on the door for fourth. We could have won that race. We definitely could have and should have had a podium. And, uh, I mean, I guess that's just racing. You get a couple knuckleheads. But it's really frustrating because it was the first good race we had going there for... That's the closest to the lead we've been in a very long time. So to get punted like that's really frustrating. And all we can bring home is a top five, but... I mean, it was, uh... Yeah. It is what it is, I guess. We still gained our safety rating. We actually got our S rank back, so... I guess cooler heads prevailed there. I don't know, man. I don't know. Just kind of salty, I guess, about the... The massive dumpage.
God damn it. My controller, oh, the battery died. <clears throat> Come on, stupid charger. Let's go. Of course, I ripped the whole charger out. That's what I wanted to do. Absolutely fantastic. There we go. Oh, and I dropped my phone. Outstanding. Things are just going 110% my way right now. <laughs> oh, I dropped my mic. It's like my entire world has fallen apart in the past 10 seconds. to run qualifying laps. We've done half a lap. It's not showing any signs to get any better. I know that this GTR is the fastest car, but it's not even that fun to drive. Uh, it just wants to understeer so much.
Yes. 48-3, rather. We're at 48-3, Moves us up literally no positions. I think it maybe leaped this one spot. No, it didn't move us up any spots. But... On the friends list, anyways. That actually is going to give us... That gives us pole. We just... I think... Yeah, we're the only 48. We just got pole. Yep, there it is. We got pole with that lap. Pressure's on now. Not this paint scheme, but with this very car here before once. So it is not impossible, but it is a tall order. We have the pole by almost half a second. Our first pole, as far as I can remember, in the full game. Can we hold on to bring home the checkered flag or not? That is the question right now. It's basically the GTR Cup behind us, so here we go. It's all or nothing now.
there is a fly in my room and it keeps freaking flying into the wall behind me and it's making the most annoying noise I've ever heard in my life and it can't learn from its mistakes and it keeps running into the ceiling and I feel like that's representative of us finding just about every way to choke a race away. behind us. Gives us a little breathing room. Now it's a game of distance rather than it is a game of where to put the car. Two seconds back to in my tree. Solid so far. A long way to go. second on him. Give or take a tenth. Got a little sloppy on the exit of that S. issue through the chicane too much. We can give up about a tenth if we have to. Don't want to give them any time, but I'd rather give up a tenth through there each lap if we're building a lead than force the issue and potentially crash. Forty-nine-eight. We'll see what everybody else in the field runs. Halfway home to our first sport mode win in the full game. Our 21st among all the betas, demos, and full game. It's up to four seconds now. Finally doing it, and on stream no less. The number five car, that's the gap behind. Another two miles or so to go. Can we hold them off? We still hold on to the fast lap, this time by as well. Could we get away with a grand slam, no less?
the Grand Slam would require the pole leading every lap and winning the race, which we're en route to do if we finish this in first right now. And the fast lap as well. Yeah, we got something in there. 4.3 back. They're battling behind us. We can give up some time here and there. We're, we're pretty much out of dive bomb range too, so if they want to get dirty, they're going to miss. It seems like they are getting pretty dirty back there with the way that they're swapping. made before. Almost got my first sport mode win in the full game at Brands Hatch. Was passed in the last 20 feet. But today we looked like we were going to turn things around at Majoire. Got knocked out from P2. Had a car to win the race. Couldn't get it done. But we come here, take the pole, lead every lap, and we're going to win at Dragon Trail for our first sport mode win in the full game on our 21st overall and that feels better than anything else right now that's just a demonstration of, of dominance I am thrilled with that thanks guys for the congratulations yeah, I'm playing with the I'm playing with the joystick tonight. Couldn't I wasn't I don't think I was prepared for uh, another night of the six axis as fun as it is. But hey, we got our win here, and we finally grabbed it. So, and in assertive fashion, we will take the W, the first of our full game career and it was a clean race too now to see if we got the grand slam or not we in fact did we got the pole we led every lap we set the fastest lap and we won the race that is a Sebastian Vettel type performance right there and uh, we're going to go ahead and go replay and save that replay. We finally have, we can now say that we have won a sport mode race in every version of the game. Because we've won several races, we, ran, we won 18 races over the course of the beta. We won two in the demo. And we've won one and counting in the full game. So, that's awesome. Now I get to uh, try something else out that I've been wanting to do for a little while. GT Sport or PC2? I want to buy one of them tomorrow. I would say GT Sport if you like if you like the online aspect. If you want variety of sports cars and indie cars and open wheel. If you're looking for a vast variety of things to choose from, project cars. But if you're looking for Gran Turismo, if you want to see some really fun online racing and whatnot. So, so there we have it. We've got our first win cleanly and in Grand Slam fashion. And, uh, yeah, well now we get to, oh, oh, the daily workout, even, I actually already received my daily workout car, so I'm not sure why this is happening, but sure, I'll take it. <laughs> oh, and we won another Hellcat, so...
So now we get to try something here. New design. Oh, I didn't want to do actually. I didn't want to do new design. Hold up. Open design. And let's go ahead and find something that I've kind of wanted to do to personalize each car livery to make it a little more special is uh, list the race wins on the car as I got them uh, with each paint scheme since there's no limit to as many paint schemes as you can have um, So, kind of wonder what your guys' opinion on this will be, but I think it's a pretty neat idea. What day is today? Today is the 24th. 24th of October. And our first W finally appears in the form of the GR4 race in Grand Slam fashion. And that is for you guys right there. That is a really lopsided sort of victory sticker, but we'll take it. And since it's a Grand Slam, I think we'll actually recolor the the track to be pink. Since it was a Grand Slam, and we owned their asses. <laughs> there we go. So, the first sticker for winning races has been uh, the October 24th race. Oh, I just realized I put the wrong track on there. Good job, NASCAR fan. I'm an idiot.
Um, I was so excited. Actually, I don't think I've done... Oh, I haven't even done the track yet, so hold on. This will be a WIP then. My bad. I'm, I'm clearly a little scatterbrained right now. <laughs> I would like to apply the livery now. I'm not very smart, guys. I'm sorry. I, it was so... I was... I don't know. I'm weird. <laughs> yeah, it's the wrong track. I'm just stupid. <laughs> How do I select steering wheel control? I can't find the settings. You have to go to like, I don't know, there's a, there's a plethora of options you have to go through. I'll show you in a second. It's better to just show you. I had a custom setup on here. Um, why does it do that? It messed with the livery when we did that. I don't like that. We're going to have to go back and fix that. Kind of broke the back end of the car for some reason. I don't know why that... That's that's another really annoying issue. So you go to options and then controllers. And then... You just kind of select which one you have. And that's how that works. But Let's go to campaign. Not mission challenge. I'm drunk. Circuit experience. Or actually, let's claim our bonuses here. Because we got... A race win bonus there. Oh, we got a pole position bonus, too. So we went... I did not just... I just selected the bonuses. Why are you doing this to me, Gran Turismo? There we go. We got a pole position and race win bonus. So that was our first pole, followed by our first win in the full game. And I will pocket that happily. And our first fastest... second fastest lap. And it was took us 21 attempts to get the 21st win. It took us 20 for 21 attempts. So we had to catch up. We had to catch up and lose 20 times. So now we're all pretty much even, I guess. I don't know. Uh, two more clean races away from getting a um, another bonus there. So we'll go into our old campaign. We'll go to Circuit Experience, and we'll quickly. Oh, Jesus. Quickly learn Dragon Trail, even though we already know Dragon Trail. But clearly, we know our way around Dragon Trail. First and win in my 23rd race. <laughs> I think you've got some of your abbreviations wrong there, fam. Oh my gosh, alright, so... Jesus, we we caught the inner wall there. Really glad we didn't choke like that in the race. But good lord. This jag.
These are like incredibly easy to get gold on on most of the tracks. You have to like really struggle with the section and not get the gold. Part two's that bit. all the way across the finish line. <laughs> Another easy gold. Oh, damn it. <laughs> That's just the last bit. My controller just started vibrating again. It hasn't had vibration for- oh my god, that's very strange actually. My controller hasn't had vibration since like the big Grand Theft Auto debacle when it just stopped working all together because it got too hot and the vibration never worked again. But just now going into that corner the brakes were starting to lock up and then the controller actually vibrated. And that was a strange feeling because I had gotten so used to not having any. Now the question is, is it back to stay? Or is that just a brief moment where it's like, oh. It looks like it was just a brief moment of Because it's gone again. is left is to hit the um, full lap here put in a heckin flyer and obviously pass Z28 because that's how good we are now um, we're not going to get Z28 I don't think we're going to get GT22 I'd love to this car handles well enough I think that if we put the time and effort in we could get there but we're just here to get the, the decals and go. So maybe one day we'll go back and try and top the leaderboard. But we're here for track mastery at the moment. So 
sloppy. Oh, the vibration's back again. And it's gone. Ooh, we even got a penalty here, fam. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, we'll try that again. Things just compounded really quickly there for the worse. Check the rest of that message in a moment, Bambi. Oh, if somebody's fighting about people begging for subs in the in the, in the chat, don't do it. It's annoying. Really. I'm not going to give you a shout out for begging for subs, I'll give you a shout out if I know that your content is good and I know that you're a cool person, but don't beg for subs on my comments. It's not like, I mean, we're not even PewDiePie or anything like that, guys. I mean, we got a good amount of people watching our streams regularly now, which is amazing, but we don't have enough people watching the streams to make an impact on your channel for begging for subs. Like, the people came to watch. Gran Turismo, they didn't come to sub this low-end gamer who knows that they can make it if they can just get the sub count. Like, they don't, people don't care. They'll care if they go and find your channel and think that your content is good. They, they won't care if, they'll be more turned off by looking at your channel if they know that you were begging for subs at some point. It's a pretty lame thing to do. We actually are top four on our friends list there, which is shockingly good. We beat Noir and Crash Broke and Angel, Mad Max. We beat Bambi, but I think a lot of these people just were like, let me get my credits and go. Because we still have room for improvement too. Alright, oh wow. I don't have any of these cars, so I have a variant of the BMW. Oh! Oh, God! That's... Ooh, baby. It's a triple. Ooh. That's juicy right there. Is that our reward? Is that our reward for, for winning as we get the stickers and we get the McLaren? Because that's a Badass car to win. Holy crap. Like that. Ooh. Ooh. That's a sexy car. Of the highest degree. Okay, so now we'll go back in. Roof. And then we'll find our court or find our court circuit experience we'll find the dragon trail logo
There we go. First win. 1024 Dragon Trail Seaside. So not only do we get our first win, not only is it a Grand Slam, not only is it with this amazingly cool looking livery, but we go and win some extra money while we do the surge experience. And technically, I'm going to call it just for the sake of being a fun sort of canonical role play sort of situation we also win the mclaren for that so that i mean that that's that's pretty cool right there very cool very cool oh jesus it's uh it's eliminated the color I think it's, well, it's not quite that one, is it? It isn't quite that one. Wow, thanks Gran Turismo for not saving my livery <laughs> color. I think we'll just put it as that for now, and then we'll go down and find the other one. Is that the color? Or Well damn Gran Turismo, how do you expect me to fix your broken broken Alright, we're just gonna have to like duplicate or hold on. Yes, cancel editing. What we're gonna have to do here is do some divine intervention. And find a decal on the back of the car. To just because the colors are going to bother me to Earth's end if I don't get them corrected to be the same color. So, so we can do this, and then we'll do duplicate, and then we'll slide you over like that. It's not super efficient, but it's what we have to do to continue... I don't know why, like, you'll lose some of the livery on... It's usually on the back of the car, too. I don't know why you lose, like, part of the livery on the back of the car when you edit it. That doesn't make much sense to me. Because everything else will be totally fine. And then it'll be like, surprise! Your back end's screwed up, and that just doesn't make any sense to me. But it's fine. Is there a little golden patch on the top, too? Okay, so even the back, even the, the little golden patch is on the back here. Heck, man, what is going on, Gran Turismo? You have such a powerful livery editor, but you better make sure... It's doing it here, too, isn't it? No. Yeah, it kind of is. You better, be... you guys better make damn sure, like, that you're done with your livery when you're done with your livery, because it looks like it's a lot more trouble than it's worth half the time to fix everything. We need something roof wise something was slapped on the roof of this car is that it right there that is it right there okay boom okay so how do we miss that little I'll just duplicate on reverse then close enough that's about as close as we're gonna get it works There we go. And it should update now. I have to go, but keep up the awesome streams. Thanks, Spectre. Appreciate it. Glad you're enjoying. I think we're just going to quit while we're ahead on sport mode. I think we're going to probably paint this McLaren and give it a little test run or two, and then I think we'll call it a stream. I mean, we 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 gotta quit while we're ahead here. We we came what we did to do, which was win. Um, we did it in a really dominating fashion. We got our safety rating back to S. It's been a pretty good day. I don't want to jeopardize that. I'm gonna paint a paint a livery for the McLaren, run a run a little test race or whatever with the McLaren, and then we're gonna go ahead and call it because I just I'm pretty pretty stoked. 
and uh, I don't want to don't want to risk making myself angry when I get inevitably punted in the next four races to make up for the win. So. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to have to go to home. Garage. We'll find it first. There it is. The car's shape alone is enough to make anybody fear for their life. Look at the look at the carbon, man. Look at all that carbon. Mmm. Mmm. Look at all that lack of carbon now. <laughs> we could do like we could legit do a Force India replica if we wanted. I think we'll actually just kind of commit to. Oh, let's see. What is? What special colors do we have first off? Oh, that's cool. So, let's just, let's kind of like do uh, some McLaren F1 colors. Because I know they have a pretty simple design. So we'll go find our McLaren F1 car. Okay, so pretty much a bright orange front. I wonder if it'll come if if along with this it'll come with that's the hood. So that's our workspace for the hood. What is other? Okay, so other is basically the carbon panels. The body. That's the body. And then I guess that means that this is the rear wing. This is the body included in the... It is included for the shark fin. So that's where the shark fin is. So we'll start out with the hood since that's this whole area here. And this is... Basically, all of this almost is like orange in some shape or form. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It's like slightly paler than that, but I think we'll just try and find it here. I think that's McLaren orange, pretty much. And now it gets a little bit interesting because we got those swoops. This is going to be after the 2017 Formula One McLaren. The infamous let's break down every race and make Fernando Alonso really pissed off at us. McLaren Honda. So, that'll be, that's why I was joking, like, I wonder if it'll come along with the, uh, unreliability and just explosion of engine parts every five minutes. That fly is still in my room, and it's still just ridiculous. It's just flying into the ceiling and it's making me so upset. Because it's just the most mundane little noise. 
And it's so freaky. You guys have no idea how much that bothers me. Like, because a lot of the time, the mundane noises don't bother me. But for some reason, bugs and flies, like, oh my god. It's the most annoying thing I've ever heard. And I don't understand why they can't just die after they hit it enough times. Like, if I, if I banged my head against a door frame... Eventually, I would start doing brain damage, and eventually I would die. Why this fly insists on continuously flying into the ceiling, literally a couple times every second, and, and how it still isn't dead yet is just baffling to me. And a testament, it is a testament to the safety that has been mandated by flies to make these drivers, these, these, these pilots survive these massive accidents. It is just mind-blowing how far that the sport has come with fly survivability in, in big accidents. I'm very impressed and very satisfied. And it makes, except for I'm not satisfied because this fly hasn't died yet. But, uh... I think even PETA hates flies. There's got to be a point where it's like, enough's enough, you know? <laughs> it's like, we, PETA be like, we support all animals except for flies. Those guys really just, we, we can't handle them. We've had enough of them. I really have no idea where I'm going with any of this, but... <laughs> I'm being silly because I'm a race winner in sport mode, guys. Are you proud of me or are you proud of me? Because I'm proud of me. Oh, jeez. That's kind of not appealing. Kind of downsize that a little bit. It's going to be kind of hard to, like, one-to-one -one scale this car, because the body of a Formula One car and the body of this Vision Gran Turismo are ab about as different as it gets. But, uh, I mean, it's still going to look pretty badass, I would think. Uh, I think we're going to have to mess with our depth and stuff to clear that little side pod shenanigans. That's about even, and it does run the entirety of the car. Let me bring the car back up here. Hold on. Yeah, that's... Then it kind of turns into a triangle midway through, but there is a white line that runs, like, the entirety of the car, so... Well, not the entirety of the car, technically, but for for this sake, we're going to say the entirety of the car. I'm loving all these low-res quality images, though, so that I can't even see what I'm trying to do. There we go. Stuffel Van Dorn and F Fernando Alonso unable to finish any races in this prototype. As unfortunately, it broke down before it got off of the semi-truck to test the car's capabilities. That was my garbage Will Buxton impersonation. Oh, damn it. I was in the middle of my Will Buxton glorification. I forgot to mess with the depth settings. Oh. There, that's... That should do it. Yes, that that did do it. Wait, is it a uh, is this an asymmetrical car? Hold up. Oh no! Oh Jesus. Okay, it's not asymmetrical. It just decided that the depth was gonna be different on this side of the car. I was about to say like, damn. Subtle subtle differences that I don't notice. 
So this kind of like... This is interesting because this might actually work on this car. Um, I think this is going to be another another roof. And then we're going to have this sort of s s big curve. I guess it is almost a 180, so... We'll go ahead and use the 180 and see if that'll do what we need it to. Because it kind of like... Thank God for the skew tool. That is a godsend sometimes. This is a really weird way to paint this. Oh, that's going to be nasty. Oh, that's going to be... N Ooh, that's going to be ugly. Ooh, that's going to be ugly. I think we're gonna have to two. We're gonna have to two part this. Yeah, we're gonna have to two part that for sure, because that's just ugly as hell like that. So we're gonna two part. Oh god. All right. So, ooh, that's just ugly to look at like that. Okay. So we're gonna have to two part it. Much easier said than done. I'm trying to... I really wish there was like a quarter circle outline. Because there's a quarter circle. It's right there. Right there. But like, we need an outline of that really badly. It's kind of frustrating that we don't have that, but... This is why we need that, because it's really wonky. Trying to make stuff like this work. Uh, I don't like that, but I think that's how it's just... I think that's just how it's going to have to be. I don't think there's any way to... There's just there's just no way. We don't have a quarter circle, so there's no way that we can do that without it just poking out and being ugly. So I think we're just going to have to cut our losses and kind of accept that that's not going to happen. So we would go angle limit and then cut that way down. I think that still retains the original design. And then we'll duplicate on reverse. And... And then we'll go to the sides. And we can do a little swooshy swoosh. Like so. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Wow, great. Oh, it's blinking around, too. Oh, Jesus. I I think the shark fin in, in, in its entirety just isn't going to happen, guys. I don't think that we can... It's so weird. I really don't like that. We need a quarter circle outline so freaking desperate like polyphony if you are watching this i can't press how crucial it is that we get a quarter circle outline like literally just chop us chop a line out of that give us a quarter circle we need it it's not even a it's not even a request it is a necessity 
the fact that we don't have one and yet we have a lot of really helpful tools that that quarter circle is about as important as the um it can be as, as important as the teardrop tool half the time so it's super effing frustrating that we don't even have that yeah we don't have it we need it <laughs> it's it's kind of a it's kind of a must have for painting we even have an opposite half circle or quarter circle like come on polyphony can we just get the outline of the quarter circle that's all i ask we have like every every freaking circular shape under the sun except for the quarter circle and it's the most crucial one we have all these oblongs and stuff but not a single freaking uh. That's just... Oh, that's so bothering. We're gonna have to really cheese this up to... Try and make it not look terrible. Although it's doing this weird thing now where it's blinking and I can't even... I don't know how we're gonna get orange up there. <laughs> I just... Guys, this shark fin just isn't going to happen. It does not want to cooperate at all. I'm so sorry. We're almost... Every time it looks like it's almost going to work, it just... Psych, that's the wrong number. Look at that. Why is it... Tiny Tim tiptoe by the wind... See, you just... You can't do it. Shark fin just isn't happening. I'm sorry. I'll be right back. I'll BRB. Try and figure out in the meantime what I want to do with this.
Okay, I have returned, and I know what I'm going to do with the shark fin. Nothing. It's come to the realization that, uh, I've come to the realization that this thing won't finish half the Grand Prix it starts anyways. So there's no point in focusing that much on the livery, because it'll be DNF'd by lap 20 every week. Every week. So I'm thinking, now that I have just made sure I will never, ever be hired to race a car by Honda with that statement, um, not that they were scouting me anyways, let's be real. We're going to just go ahead and finish off. Grand, grando, grando finale. Ye. Ye. So basically... Yeah, there's just something that comes in here and then just kind of... Where does the orange... Where does the orange come back? Excuse me, McLaren, how did you do that? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. Oh, so what basically we've screwed up on the livery, but like I said, doesn't really matter because we're never going to finish a race anyways with this livery because it is the McLaren Honda livery. So we're just going to we're gonna do the best we can with the equipment we've got, and that means being Fernando Alonso and threaten retirement every time the car dies. But unlike... Unlike Felipe Massa, we actually have talent and deserve to stay in the sport. Sorry to the Brazilian fans of Formula One. I've just slain you. And this is why we need a quarter circle. Oh my god, that's gonna... This is gonna be my pet peeve until they either A, add it, or somebody does a half circle or quarter circle in the, uh, the vectors. Because until then, you're gonna have to skew it and and make your own like Chinese Walmart quarter circles and they always will look like trash because they're not you're never going to hit that perfect radius like oh jesus like that's ugh, it's cringe like that is not in what world is that a quarter circle it's not cuz that's not the world we live in. We don't live in a quarter world, qu quarter, qu quarter, quarter circle world. We live in a America where I, I don't even know where I'm going with this. The point is, no quarter circles lead to anarchy. And thus, Mr. Kazunori Yamauchi, I am begging you please to give us what we w ask for. We have been not rioting because we are civil people for weeks. Okay, we, we need to... You need to answer our not destruction because we're civil people. You, you need to answer our, 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 our cries for help that have not resulted in tipping over trash cans. Because that's what riots are, just tipping trash cans over. Can you imagine if, like, actual full-scale riots were just, like, petty, passive-aggressive things? Like, can, can you imagine, like, a hundred pissed-off people running down a street flipping up, like, mailboxes? That would be the funniest thing ever. They just... <laughs> they're all pissed, and they just run down and start flipping everybody's mailboxes up, so every, all, the, all the mailmen think that there's gonna be a... There's gonna be mail, so they open it, and... You just got pranked! There's no mail! You know, or, or they just like put put trash in a recycling bin and put recyclables in a trash bin, like that is goddamn diabolical. Could you imagine the the public outlash, the the cry for help 
from the government. <laughs> if I have, <laughs> I'm just all I can picture is like a bunch of angry people running down a, a very like New York running down Times, you know, or running down um, Times Square and just like throwing gum wrappers, throwing gum with the wrapper attached to it and sticking it on the the sidewalk as they run down the street like the super really petty passive aggressive littering like <laughs> throwing gravel onto the street not at cars but just throwing it onto the street to be a minor inconvenience to people who drive over it like why is that not a thing? <laughs> that would make the world so much more pure if that's how riots were. If people just passive aggressive, you're angry but you can't get super salty type of type of disagreement settlements. Like we gotta settle this in a in a violent fashion. Tips over a newsstand. Diabolical. That's what we're thinking about here while we paint the McLaren livery. Because we have a lot of time to think. Because we'll never finish a damn race. So I'm thinking it's time for the teardrop tool. Ripperoni, I'm still on the hood. Add a layer below. Nope. Add a layer below. Yep. And teardrop. One, two, three, four. Size that up and around and make it so it fits, sort of what we're looking for here listen to some sick k-pop jams duplicate on reverse it's like the arc bird. It's the arc bird from from uh, Ace Combat, guys. Is that the arc bird? It is the arc bird. We have the arc bird. I'm sorry. Nobody has any any freaking clue what I'm talking about right now. I apologize. <laughs> Unless Formidable's watching. If Formidable's watching, he knows what I'm talking about. But I don't think anybody knows what a what Ace Combat really is. So I apologize. For, for making you suffer through me doing really lame references to a really good game. If you do know what the hell I'm talking about, props to you for knowing a savage video game series. Cannot wait for Ace Combat 7 to release so I can suck <laughs> some more. Here's what I think we'll do. We'll just accept that this is the only shark fin we're going to get. We'll turn that angle limit off. Boom. There, we have a McLaren Honda. Ready to explode it off the grid. Like, right off the grid. If it even makes it there because Russia this year. But... Yeah, I have a problem. Let's uh, check the comments here. <laughs> Good night, Bambi. Oh, John, you did. You played a couple of the Ace Combat. Which ones did you play? I played four and I played five. 
And I will be playing 7 when the time comes. Oh, you play you played the same ones I played then. Isn't that just fantastic, Mobius 1? Alonzo's number is 12, isn't it? I believe it is 12. I want to say yes, it is 12, but I'm... I'm only so certain about that. It's 14, actually. Now that I remember, I believe it is 14. Somebody correct me so I don't have to Google it. I'm pretty sure it's 14. Fourteen. Thank you. I thought... I don't know why I was thinking... I don't know why I was thinking what I was, but... Yeah, I knew it was... This is one of those times where the angle actually kind of gives off a cool effect, because it warps the number in such a way that, like kind of works for us. A hey, Fernando Alonso. It really helps when you can pronounce the guy's name correctly at IndyCar 500 or the Indianapolis 500 commentators. And rounding out of turn four, here he comes, Fernando Alonso. Like, you don't understand. I've never cringed so hard. Then <laughs> Fernando Alonso is going to complete lap three of his qualifying run. Like, oh, gross. <laughs> Like, I can get when people miss it by a little bit, because I even screw up his name a couple times. I'll be like, Fernando. I'll do Fernando Alonso. I believe it's just Alonso. I think, no, I don't know. I can't, I can't, I always alternate between whether or not I pronounce the Z or the S in Alonso or Alonso. But, I, I don't, it was like the official Indy 500 like, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway commentator, and he's like, Fernando Alonso! I'm like, oh! Fernando Alonso, no! Stop it. You lost your privilege. Check your privilege. I've never cringed so hard. Although that's not true, because then, like, a day later, frickin' Sebastian Bourdais, eight turn two safer barrier, and I cringed really hard at that crash. But it's really hard to not cringe at that crash, because it was effing brutal. When Alan Bestwick's voice, like, cracks, you know that it's hit the fan, and somebody got seriously hurt. Like, Alan Bestwick never gets that excited. He's always genuinely excited. And just has a general sense of excite excitedness about him. But he never gets, like, concerned, excited like that. Unless there's something really bad happening. And that was... That easily could have killed Bourdais. Like, he's he's so incredibly lucky that he did not die. <laughs> he should have died. I mean, <laughs> as bad of a crash as that was, he should not be alive. <laughs> and he's... His tough little french fry self gets out. He's like... Gets back in the car later in the year. Yeah, I can still race. I'm ready to race. Like, you little death cheater. Good on ya. We're just gonna put Gran Turismo logos on the car. That fly is still at it, dude. That fly is still just repeatedly smashing into the into the ceiling above my floor lamp. I really hope he's enjoying himself. Cause it's it's I I have like one 
I have one earbud in, and I have my my headphone on, and I'm listening to to make to music, K-pop of cur- of course, but I'm listening to music, and at the same time I have like my ear just kind of open on the right side. I have I have like the headphone loosely on my right ear, and I can still hear that fly in the background, and it's 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 making me genuinely like kind of fidgety like it's just pissing me off on the highest level there's really not a whole lot more to do to this car that looks freaking uh, oh ooh. I mean we'll just slap a couple of Gran Turismo logos on the car because well, we'll slap a GoPro logo up there because we should be a hero when we're running with you gotta be a hero when you're running with zero engine power and zero survivability for the race weekend that takes some real dedication to not flip out like I've, I've I have a lot of respect for Fernando Alonso for his ability to literally not want to kill every single person involved. I mean, I'm sure he does, but, like, he does a really damn good job of not showing it. The rear wing roof. I like that's what... I like that's... I love that that's how they titled the rear wing... top of the rear wing is just the rear wing... the rear wing roof. I actually kind of like the black there. I'm going to keep that black there from the spots that didn't cover because it actually looks pretty cool. It's got those little little lines there, but like I said, this this is this this car will never finish a race. It just can't happen. So Terrible whistling. Go. There we go. We got our little Gran Turismo logo there. Our our Gran Turismo logo. Because what is pronunciation of things when you're the Indy 500 commentator? We've completed Fernando Alonso's machine. <laughs> Let's color the wheel. You can't change the wheels. I didn't want to. I wanted to paint the wheels. Come on, get it together, polyphony. Polyphony. I actually kind of like that red. Let's see what the special colors would look like on... Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that candy metallic, though. Is that rainbow. Yeah, there's that. Should have used that for the BP oil spill car. Because it's the most rainbowy thing ever. I think we're going to use that candy metallic, actually. That's really nice on this car. Like, oh, hot day. What? Is it blue on one side? And I didn't even notice that. Holy hell. Okay. That's a game changer for me. That's pretty friggin' lit. I don't know why there's a... Huh. I wonder why that is. I wonder if there's any merit to that. Fernando Alonso. There's a uh, thing. Something got lost in translation at Polyphony. Um, because there was uh, something about Lewis Hamilton. And uh, it. Or no, it was talking about Ferrari. 
it was one of the museum items about Ferrari, and they were talking about how Schumacher won the championship or something like that, and it was like second place was, or no, it was uh, Massa and and Fernando finished one two in the championship, and they they said his name Ferdinand Alonso. And I'm like, well, someone got fired. <laughs> Like, you just messed up Fernando Alonso's name, of all people. Like, what is what is actually wrong with you? Ferdinand Alonso. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> like, stop trying, please. You are not a translator anymore. Not for Japanese, anyways. Gotta love Ferdinand Alonso. He's my favorite Formula One driver. I just thought that was funny. Yeah, I remember Steve Park. Ferdinando Lonzo. <laughs> Thanks for the compliments, John. It's now going live, so you guys can all download it. He's a dual world world champion, right? He's got two. Pretty sure he has two. I know he's he won 2006, and I think he won 2005. I want to say he won 0605. I know 06. Might have been 0607. Or no, because Ferrari won in 07. I didn't start watching F1 until 2010, so I'm sorry. I would be terrible at Grill the Grid. Um, oh, 2006 and 2005. So I was correct. Here we go. Let's take her. Let's, let's take her for a little spin, why don't we? Oh, I've almost completed the liveries. How many do we need to make to get there now? We need to make one more livery. Until after the season starts. That's okay. That'll give the game time to kind of iron out all of its bugs and issues and stuff, and maybe give us a freaking half circle, quarter circle rather. We have plenty of half circles. Oh, it just it frustrates me so much. Let's uh let's do Let's do Interlagos, man. We've never done Interlagos in Sunset. Oh, Dawn looks freaking wild. It's a great day for a uh great day for Formula 1 race in 2020, isn't it? Grid start. Where, let's see, we're McLaren F1, so we probably, at a place like Interlagos, we have enough downforce to make it to Q2. But there is a long straightaway, so we're probably going to be struggling around the 11th, I don't know. We would probably make it to Q3, I would think, but just barely. By then the engine would fail, so I'm going to say we made it to Q3 and then the engine exploded. Pirellis. <laughs> and we'll do fuel consumption 3 because they have small gas tanks. Or we're underfueled slightly, I guess. Yeah, we'll make. So we got the Pirelli tires. Let's go. I think I might have set it to like 3 laps, but you know, whatever. Whatevs. Sexy car, man. So 
this will be the last little bit of screwing around we'll do on the stream, guys. Hope Lamar comes. I hope it does, too. I appreciate the random factoids on here in this game. Yeah. You have no faith in this car. <laughs> the cool thing about the fictitious cars in this game, though, is that they are they're sort of modeled around what they would be like in real life, which is why it's so cool. It's not just straight-up Ridge Racer. Like, it's actually... Like, if this were to happen in real life, this is what it would look like. This is what it would be like. This is what it would feel like. Alright, Fernando, let's go. Fernando Alonso. Well, hell, it's about as hectic as a start of a Grand Prix. Look at that much. It's really tight. Like, the car is incredibly tight. Holy sh... Holy, holy shoemaker. Holy shoemaker. That is a tight race car. Like, there's not any front end grip. Which is weird because that's usually McLaren's wheelhouse is the grip. Like, mechanically, the McLaren is a great machine. It's, it's the Honda part that gets it. It's a lovely race car. Even though it's had its share of mechanical failures, that overall hasn't been as much of an issue. Oh yeah, I forgot you lean into this thing, which is mental. Like a crazy stop. DRS enabled, I guess. Let's go, boys. Oh. And there goes the engine. Uh, I think this is about the point where Fernando would go. Absolutely unbelievable. I do I do not believe it. No power. No power. I actually just cut the engine with the e-brake. Don't don't get don't get excited. Don't think that the car actually can explode like that. The GV2 engine, unbelievable. Um, wonder what a NASCAR fan VGT would be like. Well, John, you know, I never really have thought about it. Um, all right, so this is McLaren's all downforce. So we're going to give it extra down. For well, that's probably half the issue. Why are the front anti-roll bars at, like... Why were they at 4? And why were, the, or why were they at 7? And why were the rears at 4? We kind of need, like, a flip-flop of that. Um, a NASCAR fan VGT? I think that's an interesting concept. I've never really given much thought to it. Uh, I mean, obviously, everybody would, like... Everybody daydreams of what their dream car to design would look like. But the, it's the fact of all those limitless possibilities that is enough to make me not want to do it. Because I would be so overwhelmed. I would ha I have no, Not that I wouldn't want to do it. Let me correct myself. I'd have no idea what to do it over. Because it is the, it is the fact that I have no limits that limits me so much. Because I have no clue. I'll be overwhelmed with ideas. I don't think I would ever be able to to straight up commit to one design and, and carry it out for fear of it turning up really insignificant and not cool like the like the, the Mercedes-Benz VGP or something like that. Jesus, this thing's a beast in the corners, or on the straightaways. Oh, I got suspension damage. It was the Verstappen quote from Singapore. I got damage. Oh, as he's getting hit the second time. All 
I wish you could set the names of the AI. Like, that's something that's never going to happen. I'm not even going to ask for it to happen because it's just such a mundane thing. But if you could set the names of each AI driver, that would be really fun. Because you get exactly 20 drivers, and you name them all the Formula 1 guys. Like, and then just kind of, like, get rid of Kip Yat or somebody who's really insignificant and put yourself in place. That's something I'm interested in seeing. I'm wondering who's going to do the first Formula One series, and what car do they use? Do they use the Chaparral? Do they try and use the 2 and 4? Do they use the VGT like this? Do they wait for another VGT? Do they wait for DLC? What what are what are we going to have for a Formula One-esque sort of racing experience? Right now, I think this is probably the closest, even though there's only six gears opposed to eight, but... It's either this or the Chaparral, I would imagine. Because the 2 and 4 is just too, too slow to be realistically considered. over. Oh! Oh no! That was some Kimi Raikkonen levels of explosion on the front stretch there. Holy moly. We just drilled the pit wall. Oh my god, that was special. I have no power. Okay, Fernando, uh, try again, please. I tried three times already. Try yourself. Oh, that. Ooh. Ooh, the Verstappen. Up the inside with the totally unrealistic and unexpected four wide because we have no class. Although that was Verstappen from earlier this year. He, like, classed up real quick. It still just doesn't turn. There's just no front grip. Oh my god. Is this just like the McLaren complex? You just start complaining about how it drives? Like, because that was just a genuine complaint. Like, that wasn't me trying to make poke, poke light fun at Fernando. Just to be clear, I totally am... I don't blame Fernando one bit for being pissed off. He got... He got absolutely screwed. He deserves a way better ride. He's... He's... He's doing amazing for the equipment he has. He needs a better ride, and he needs it quickly. But I think he's already signed back for 2018, which is just kind of disappointing, because it means another year of Fernando not doing anything worthwhile. Fernando, if I have... There are a few drivers that I have more respect for than Fernando Alonso. He is... You could put him in just about anything and he'd be good at it. I'd love to see him try out NASCAR one time, do what Kimi Raikkonen did, just run like one or two races. I'd love to see how he do it, does in it, because he adapted to IndyCar so freaking quickly. I feel like if he got a ride at the Daytona 500, he'd get a top 10 finish.
try. Might have to Kevin Magnuson one of these corners and just really bomb it up there. Jesus. Oh, we hit the, we just killed the suspension. Not that it matters. P4, 4, 5, P5. That's an excellent run from Fernando Alonso. P5 for McLaren Honda. Incredible. Yeah. Oh my god, Zach Italia. Hi, Zach. Dude, it's been so long. I want to see some single seaters really badly. I really, really, really want to see some single seaters. Yeah, it's been forever, Zach. Dude, holy hell. Welcome, welcome. For those that don't know, me and Zach Italia, Zach Italia was one of the people that raced in, in fun runs during the phase when it wasn't garbage. And he's actually a pretty quick little racer, so. We go way back to Gran Turismo 6. <laughs> So yeah, um, I mean, that's basically about all I have for tonight. I'd appreciate more go-karts. Struggle of no PS4, would love to play with you again. Yeah, dude, I mean, yeah. I think I'll do, I'll do one more race, I think. Um, I think I will do a go-kart race just for shiz and giggles. Um, and we're going to do it at an incredibly, why are you doing this here racetrack? <laughs> we're going to do some, we're going to do a cloudy, do a cloudy evening at Blue Moon Bay. <laughs> Yay, my guy. <laughs> and we're going to do manual transmission and we're going to do a two lapper, 20 cars, we're going to start ninth on the grid, no boost, mechanical on light. We're going to turn our fuel consumption up to freaking six, our tire wear to eight. Actually, we should probably turn this to three because I, we've made this mistake once before. Professional difficulty, one make race. Boom, let's go. It's going to be literally Talladega, but in go-kart form. Listen to that baby purr. <laughs> the big one. Is GT Sport as fun as GT6 multiplayer wise? Yeah, I think sport mode is really fun uh, when people are racing cleanly. When they're not, you just want to kill yourself. But when everybody's racing clean, you can have some really nice scraps with people. Go. Oh Jesus! Oh, je oh, oh no! We got get around. Goes the 80 championship implications. We're gonna try that again.
You didn't know that Kyle Larson was part Japanese? Well, now you know. You had 3,000 hours to assist. I think the custom race feature really saves offline gameplay. Because you could do stuff like this. And the AI are actually competitive and fun. So. Oh, that's really cool, John. So, John, I, you're, you're from California. Look at that jet. That jet's actually hauling the mail. Alright. Final lap at Blue Moon Bay. They're side by side for the lead. They're all getting three and four wide behind them. I don't think they're going to make it back around. Next flag ends the race. Who's going to win it all at Talladega? Hicks with the lead. Here comes the NASCAR fan. Remember, they still might have the big one here. <laughs> you just never know when things might happen in a NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Kart Series Race Speed Sprint Center Series Race. Here comes the 80 pushing Brad Keselowski trying to get past Danica Patrick. Who's going to win it coming out of the final quarter? Oh my! NASCAR fan slides down to the bottom. He's gonna get the draft. He's gonna go three wide in the middle. Coming to the checkered flag. Danica Patrick's gonna win the race. Danica Patrick wins. It's Aller Dagger. The Jet wins. Southwest Airlines wins it by a nose. <laughs> Hi, race car. Yeah, I'm not lifting at all the whole track. I actually kind of want to do a longer race now and do, like, legitimate commentary. <laughs> we got a clean race bonus for that. Dan of Kapatrick wins first time anyone said that ever. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you guys think we should do a 10 lapper or 15 lapper? I don't want to do, like, an hour long race, but I'll do some... I'll do some, uh, you know, we'll do some, some stuff here. Hit up the green hell. Oh, Jesus. Okay, we'll, we'll do two more races then. We'll do a, we'll do a six lapper with the go-karts and then we'll do a one lap race around Nürburgring. So we'll do Blue Moon Bay. We'll do it daytime, 10:30. I will, Zach Italia. I'm calling your bluff right now. I'll do it. We're we're gonna do one race at Blue Moon Bay for six laps with some fuel on. Get get them, or actually fuel off, because we're just gonna have that real, real experience of a a sprint cup race toward the end. We're gonna be we we just took fresh tires. We're 16th place. We got six laps to win. What's going to happen in Taller Derger? Were you aware that Eric Almarola is Cuban? I actually didn't know that one. I didn't know that Eric... I knew he was born on an Air Force base, but I didn't know he was Cuban. That's cool. I know that Eric Almarola broke his back in Kansas this year, because, you know, Kansas is probably too quick for these cars. Let me take a, a couple bites. The 
do my David Hobbs impersonation. Just through my mouth. That's the only way you can act with your David Hobbs impersonation is if you have something stuffed in your mouth. Well, I do say there's quite a bit of debris on the racing surface. Listen to some Vocaloid right now. It's time to hit it hard and heavy. All right, here we go. Let me uh, get the chat set up so I can see that while I race. And really, Almirola is going to Stuart Haas Racing. That's new to me, but that's awesome, actually. Because I like Eric Almirola, but I didn't like that he was racing for the King, because I think that Richard Petty's a bit of an asshat, so... Cool. Green flags in the air, six laps to go, it's Alladega. Who's going to win it? Go oh, Jesus! Holy hell! Around goes the 80! I think Kurt will stay, it's a matter of sponsorship, but Danica's not going to get a ride. This is Danica's last year in NASCAR, I think. She's too stubborn to go back to the Xfinity series, and as a result, she's not getting the experience that she needs, and she's just never going to perform. She needs to go back to the other series for a little bit and learn how to race those, because she was a top 10 driver in the Xfinity series when she ran her season there. So, yeah. I'm on controller. Matt Kenseth right in front of that number 80 machine. This race ain't over yet, guys. That we got three, four wide all in front of them here. Six laps to settle it here at Blue Moon Bay. What's going to happen? The inside line's checking up an awful lot. Danica Patrick just backed that whole lane up. And up to the top side of the track they go. Go by. There's Clint Boyer there, the number 15 car. Nope, that's not correct anymore. Um, nobody drives the 15 now. Look at that 80 car, side draft to Danica Patrick in the 10, pushing her out of line, trying to get that draft. That side draft's gonna slow Danica down, make NASCAR fan go past the front corner. Oh, we got a ball. Oh, they're all stacking up into turn number one. And three wide, oh, three wide through the middle. And Trevor Braid gets a massive shut for NASCAR fan. That's gonna be the, the Quaker State move of the race for Dave Blady. Robbie Gordon there in the number seven machine. Right behind the five of Casey Kane. These guys are trying to get a run up on the top lane here. We're only coming about three or four laps left in this race here on the ESPN. Oh, Jesus. Oh, and around goes the 80. Damn it. Championship implications. Okay, it's the chase race. It's the final race before the, the 15th cutoff of the championship. We need to win to stay in the championship. Look at the 80 car blocking off the starting line, keeping Matt Kenseth behind. Excellent blocking job. And after that last crash, we've only got about 20 cars left in the whole field here. I don't know if these guys are just talk about how many tires they got on their tires or not. But a lot of these guys don't know how many tires they have on the car. So they really need to be thinking about, whoa, the inside line checks up and Danica Patrick is moving up into the top 12. Kyle Busch is the number 18 car. 
he drives for the M&M's racing team because he's a nut. Matt DiBenedetto putting in a real good show on that number 23 this weekend. There you see Kyle Busch right there going to get maybe 15, maybe going to try and go around here. As Denny Hamlin, his teammate, is going to get up in front. Whoa, underneath Matt DiBenedetto goes Denny Hamlin and up to the outside. Oh, we got a car in the wall, number 80. Scrapes the wall out of turn one there. Still makes the pass on Brad Keselowski. What a drive from the number 80 car it is pushing Trevor Braid three wide with Matt, with Casey Cade and Robbie Gordon. Robbie Gordon's found about every way to choke an NASCAR Monster Sprint Cup next hell series race. So he decided that he was going to make his own racing series. Kyle Busch pushing the number 80 through the middle. Remember, the start-finish line isn't where it is at Daytona. It's about 100 feet further than that. The front four cars have broken away from the pack. And in turn one, you see the 80 car running up top to try and get more speed on the exit of the corners. We'll take this ESPN race break to remind you that basketball for two teams you've never heard of will be playing after the race on ESPN 7. Also available in Spanish via your SAP button at ESPN Deportes. Guys, I'm really impressed with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He's leading this race right now on that 17 machine. Clint Boyer gets shuffled out of line. But Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Johnson is running right there. And look at the push that Robbie, Robbie Gordon's going to go to the lead. Three laps to go at Talladega. And Robbie Gordon goes to the front of the field for the first time since 2007. NASCAR fan running that second blue, trying to get some speed in the number 80 Chevrolet. Robbie Gordon and NASCAR fan are neck and neck. Oh, contact. Oh, wow. The 80 car contacts the wall and the whoa, look out. We got cars scattering across the racing surface. Wow. I can't believe they didn't wreck. Luckily, the 80 car compacted into the safety barrier, the steel and foam energy reduction barrier, which saved his life from that minor wall touch, which would have surely killed him had that been concrete. Look at them all lining up too wide behind the leaders here. The leaders are going to be pulling away because they can't get lined up behind them. Trevor Brain's on the inside of Kylie Bush, and Clint Boyer is there too. Now what these guys need to be thinking about is they're getting a nice run out of the second corner. You see Trevor Brain getting a real big push from that number 80 car. NASCAR fans driving a pink car, and all the fans aren't happy about that because it's not a manly color. Well, guys, we got a triple threat right here. We got NASCAR fan 1400 tucked in behind Keselowski, who's tucked in behind Ricky Stenhouse Jr. These guys are really forces to be reckoned with on the plate tracks. Cods Codzak, look out, and we got trouble. The caution is out, and that's going to be the end of the race. And it, well, no, we're going to be going overtime, presented by Credit One Bank. And NASCAR fan is going to be scored in third place here. That's not an attempt, gang. That's not an attempt at the green light checkered. 
we're just getting word from David Hoots at Racing Control that they're going to turn the field the opposite direction for the final two laps. So what they're going to do here is that they're going to reverse reverse the field or they're going to reverse the, the racing cars and make them go right. Wow, that's incredible. It really is, and we are going to have a two-lap race here, and the, the question we got to be thinking about is, do these guys have enough fuel to make it to the end? Well, we know the tires have been wearing very quickly around this Tallardager racetrack, and these drivers are very professional, as indicated by the ESPN opponent setting stat tracker. These guys are all coming down and they're messing with their, 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 we're, what we're looking at them is we're seeing Jimmy Johnson take four tires there. These guys are messing with the aerodynamics. They're trying to make these cars go faster in the draft. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're doing there, but the NASCAR hasn't said anything. And they won't make it a rule until somebody that everybody likes does it, like Martin Truex Jr., and then he'll get penalized, but for now, since it's Jimmy Johnson, no penalty for the 48 team. This just in, Denny Hamlet has been caught for speeding on pit road. NASCAR fan comes out in sixth place. The green flag is out and it's overtime sponsored by Credit One Bank. Look at them all go on the green white checkered. Ryan Blady gets swamped and Jamie McMurray goes to the lead. Unbelievable, Jamie McMurray has taken the lead. Golly, we got a crash in the back. And that's going to be a caution before they could take the white. It's the big one at Talladega. And that's going to bring out the caution. And we're going to try again because the way that NASCAR works is we don't stop until either half the field is crashed or until the leader is taking the white flag. Second attempt at overtime. Now remember that overtime line is halfway down the back straightaway entering turn three. Drivers are going to have to be real cautious about that. Whoa, look at Kyle Busch. Jamie McMurray still leads. Ooh, a little bit of that 80 car whip below the yellow line. He's asked to give up those positions as Chase Elliott throws himself. Okay, for, for a quick moment here, let's just appreciate how freaking crazy this is. Ugh. Whoa, the caution's out again. We're going to do a third attempt at overtime by, by Gran Turismo. Are, are, is there anybody left in this motor race? Unbelievable sights we're seeing as Clint Boyer runs into the back of Kyle Busch. Now that's called a bump draft when they do that there. You see Kevin Harvick getting a real nice tandem from that 80. These guys can't lock bumpers. Or wait, yes they can because this is the Cup Series. But three wide behind them. Kyle Busch is the leader. Getting a very strong shove from that number 80 car. They're getting wild behind them. We've just hit the overtime line. This race is official. White flag. We're going to be in the final lap. Sponsored by Credit One Bank. Look at the run that Matt Benedetto gets. Danica Patrick is there. Ricky Rudd, who's come out of retirement for one race, is here in the 28 car. Kyle Busch going to pinch that 80. He's going to force him below the yellow line. He can't do that. They're crashing. Whoa. 
And that's not going to go over well with the number 80 team, and he's going to be out of the chase. Kyle Busch is going to win this race. Well, hold on now. It looks like the number 80 is going the wrong way. Brian France is cheering on the number 80 car. What in the world could he be doing? This could be our ESPN Sports Center move of the race. We'll wait and see what happens here. Out of turn four, Kyle Busch. Is, golly, they're all wrecking at the line. Cars everywhere. And that'll be the Sports Center move of the race as the checkered flag flies. What a finish to an spectacular spe race. Wow. And we're getting word that the race is over and nobody wins because they didn't sell enough tickets. F1 on ESPN, I really don't know how I feel about it. Alright, so, so to end off the stream here after all of that brain cell loss, we're going to lose whatever little bit we had left by a nighttime race, single lap, with the shifters. I'm scared, daddy. <laughs> It'll be a grid start, naturally, but we will be starting from the very tail end of the field. We'll turn fuel consumption to 2 just to make it interesting, and we'll turn tire wear up to 3. That should be enough to make it interesting, but not kill the cars, so... Oh! I'm listening to a Vocaloid cover of Hello by Adele. That's right. I'm a classy weeaboo. This time you have to do it while keeping your cart playing in the right direction. Well, that is the plan. But there are no gimmicks in, in Nürburgring racing. It's either you win the race or you crash out. I like Adele. I think that she's pretty good. She's a good lyric, lyrically pretty good. She's got an amazing voice. I just don't listen to her a whole lot. I'm not even listening to her. Like I said, it's a it's a cover from Vocaloid, so it's really sad and cringy. But for me, all right, here we go. This is the be all end all. This separates the the Danicas from the Sage Caroms. Not that either of those drivers are good. This is going to be sketch central. Bathurst here, or Bathurst with go-karts would be freaking crazy. Oh, look at him getting fishtaily there, man. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh, the Jesus God. This just proves my point that they basically, the flashlight, that the headlights on these cars are just really high-powered LED flashlights. Because, like, look at this. This is like a bright flashlight that Billy Mays would have endorsed when he was alive. Look at this flashlight. We're going to go to the Nürburgring racing circuit in Germany and drive a go-kart around here at night. But we're going to equip... The ever-ready flashlight. I feel like that's an actual flashlight. Well, we've screwed up royally. And we're only on the GP circuit, of course, so I'm kind of scared about what the rest of this race will entail. 
I'm never I've never been good at shifter carts. I'm always trash at shifter carts. I, I was terrible at them in GT5 or GT6 I mean. I've gotten better with them in sport, but I'm not good with them. I would think it would be flat out through here, no? No, definitely not. Whoa, that was weird. Oh yeah, the curves are death. Up. There's a caution up ahead, which means that somebody's wrecked up ahead. Yep, there's straight up been a crash up ahead. Look at that. Oh my god, three or four people just crashed right there. So this is going to be an interesting race, because this is going to be taxing for not only ourselves, but this is going to throw everyone through the ringer. Now that, now that we've just seen three AI cars go off, this is going to be a race to remember, I think. We're gonna get airborne. Lame. So we're back with the pack now. I like how it's darker in the cockpit view, it makes it much scarier. Ooh, we're riding the curb a little bit. It's turning us. It's rotating us a bit. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Waiting to see more yellows and just see like 18 carts. Just all into the foxhole. I'm seeing sparks and stuff, but... Damn, they're, they're really assaulting these go-karts. I think in real life half of them would have lost a wheel by now, as sensitive as go-karts are to stuff. He just gave up. He just literally just lifted off the throttle. He's like, I'm not playing this game. Durand, T. Durand, Frenchman. He sells something that we haven't yet. He's probably the smartest one in the field. He's backing off, man. Oh my god, you just saw his light, like, spasm when he landed. It's getting dicey up there. Holy crap, dude. Why is this so much fun? Why are the shifters so much fun even though I'm so trash at them? Oh, jeez. Oh, Jesus. Hippity hoppity. Get off Nurburgring property. Some of these AI are just being way too fearless with the curbs, like, I feel like that's why they crashed in the first sector, like, they all just went in there and nailed the left-right curbing, it's like, rip. Oh, Jesus. All fours off course. How we didn't die is just miles beyond me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, he, oh, leave it to the Kyle Bush car to just 
just pull right in front of us there when we have a massive run. We smack the wall. We keep going. We don't care. We know we're quicker. That fly is still hitting the ceiling. This is the corner I thought they'd have trouble with. I guess not, but... It'd be interesting to see how the carousel works. Oh man, look at how racy they get with each other though. That's something I really like. Like, they get super duper racy with each other. Damn, they're nailing those curves. I'm not even trying to... Well... Oh, we do have a spinner. Oh, right! Pulls right down in front of traffic. So somebody did struggle in the carousel, which is another place I thought it would happen. And then he proceeds to do the what everybody in sport mode does and just pull right in front of the entire field. Oh, oh my god. Crunch. We've got like a... This whole mid-pack is like under a blanket right now. Gotta be bold. Whoa, okay, we got hooked. Once you make contact with another go-kart, you're not, there's no chance. You're out of the race. There's just no way that you're going to, they've wrecked ahead again. There's been another accident ahead. So everybody is just struggling right now. Another yellow? What's going on? Whoa, what's going on? What is... Oh, jeez. Oh, we're all running out of gas. They're running out of gas. Oh, it was... It was too much. It was asking too much. Oh, my God. It's happening again. Sixth gear. Nine percent of fuel. Come on. The whole field's out of gas right before the entry. Massive straight. That's the lead right there. We've just won the race by virtue of a botched fuel strategy. We're just going to coast. We're going to coast it. We're going to make these 8% fuel units. We're going to make these 7% fuel units last to the finish. make it boys we're gonna make it promise you that it's a long way back for those guys though man that's that's a painful painful drive back because they got all this section to go and then they still have the entirety of the Dottinger hoe which is this whole straightaway. There, there, there's no way. We could literally stop at the tourist station and get a postcard, come back and finish the race, and still win. Ooh, it's gonna be tight though because we're gonna ha we have to get we have to trek to the top of the hill and that's gonna take a lot of fuel to get to the top of the hill oh my god it's gonna take up every little bit of fuel we have I think I think I can I think I can I think I can I think I can top of the hill cut the engine just coast just coast Just coast. Come on. Use what little fuel we have left to get up this bit. 
We're gonna run out any second. We're running out any second. Clutch it again. Gas it a little more. Still have some in the tank. Come on. We could coast for... Oh, we're out. Clutching it. Coasting it. We're going to win with no fuel. With an 11.54 flat. What a blisteringly fast lap time. We've done it. We got 33 grand for that. I think you just beat the GT2 RS record. <laughs> We ran the fast. Nobody finished. Nobody even made it back. They all ran out of gas, and I guess they had to park at the the tourist station. They couldn't even make it. Tony Stewart won at Kansas with no gas a few years back. Yeah, I know. It was 2011, because it was on his freaking... Um, I'm a Tony Stewart fan. It was his amazing championship run, where he just like didn't win anything all year and then was like oh hey we made the chase even though we shouldn't be here and then wins every race every other race that was amazing fuel adds weight yo well there you have it go-karts at Nürburgring, you'll run out of fuel. That was on like times two as well, so if that was like a full race, everybody would always run out. Yeah, he still is great. He's doing uh, lots of sprint car racing. I want to see him get into like IMSA or something. Sports cars would be awesome. What's the feedback on the game? There are a few issues, but uh, apparently Bobbert's run into some issues here himself, but I think overall it's pretty fun. I mean, I love the livery editor and everything that goes along with it. Mm. Photo mode's amazing. Sport mode's relatively fun. That's cool right there. I think you need to get that livery achievement. <laughs> Nah, I'm going to save it. Tony Stewart at the Daytona 24. He actually ran the uh, Daytona 24 hour once, and he almost won it. Him and Dale Jr. in like 04, I want to say. And they were leading the race, and their suspension broke with like a few hours left. Is there a way to set a racing number that all your cars will have? Um, you have to set it per car. I'm loving that Haruhi Suzumiya uh, Porsche, though. I can't wait until Moogle Play like actually uploads the car. That's an actually really cool scheme. That's proof that if you put enough effort into it, you do not have to have a, 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 an import, a decal importer. Because we don't have it yet. It's not in the game quite yet, so all the more impressive because that was made with just the shapes and game and stuff do some throwback schemes like they do the Darlington races yeah that would be cool um yeah I don't know we'll see you know there there's a there's a massive Tony Stewart fan who has uh, experience in a livery editor. If that isn't enough of a threat for you guys to see it, me paying a Tony Stewart scheme at some point, I don't know what is. <laughs> Loving the GT plant schemes. Yeah, dude, you should see all the VRR schemes. Um, like, it's ridiculous. 
Angel's got like 30, 30 some people signed up out of the 32 max. Like, there's Bambi's livery. Um, that Angel painted for him. Um, Angel's is in here somewhere. Of course, the Porsche is ours. Um, thanks again, guys, for continuing to get this baby trending. And keeping it in the most liked page. Like, that's freaking awesome to still be up there. Almost uh, two weeks now we've been up there. Since, like, the back when the demo was still a thing. So, we've been cruising along. Let's see. Let's go to... GT22 had a cool... Yeah, there's his scheme for the Endurance series. And there's his test car. And then Formidable, I think, might have painted his by now. I think he was the only... No, he hasn't painted his yet, but... But Angel has hers. Right here. But she also painted a lot of what-ifs. So... Hey Nass, did you see my car? I actually have not... I mean, I might have, I just didn't realize it. Hold on, let me... I'm pretty sure I accepted your friend request. Yeah, there you are. Oh, yeah, there's your... So this is what you were going to use, and I guess somebody took it. Nice scheme, though. And then... So your actual scheme isn't here yet, then. But nonetheless, very nice scheme. I like that a lot. Let's see what... Uh... Yeah, they're all pretty sick, man. I like them all. They're very nice. Let's see if has Kiwi painted anything. I think she might have by now. Nope, she has not. What about, about Crimnal? No. Yeah, but that's. I mean, that's that's the gist there. Um, GT Sport has Atasha in the game. Yeah, it does actually. There's a guy named Moogle Play who I follow, who's done. A lot of really cool schemes. Um, like, he's painted... Well, he th this was actually somebody else. Very nice scheme there. I think... Is that the... Is that just the regular Porsche? I think it is. We're going to just download that. So, he's done a couple. And then Moogle Play's done a lot of them. Like... Oh, god damn it. Oh! We crashed. 